So I'm walking around my buddy's ranch when I see a passel of hogs 100 feet out. Luckily, I had my gun bag with me. I grabbed my scoped AR, picked a target, and ran straight at it. Unfortunately, my feeble woman hands fatigued, so I dropped the AR and I grabbed my 1895 Lucky Marlin. I kneeled down, I lined up my iron sights, and I shot. And I did not miss. No empty fridge at this household. Take that, coronavirus. Now, I had a couple of people triggered by this image, which is expected from vegetarians, but these people ate meat. Funny, because when I post pictures of pork ribs or bacon, no one says a thing. You do realize that this is just the first step to this, and it's a more humane step than where most of your meat comes from. So please, if this image offends you, if you can't face where your meat comes from, please go vegetarian. Today we'll be cooking bujanina, which is basically roast garlic pork. I'll be using bone-in shoulder meat from the hog that I shot, but actually, because hog is very lean, it is going to be more tasty from a farmed pig. They just have way more fat on them. Having said that, I did a trial run on its other shoulder and it came out pretty juicy anyways. Um, the hog I shot was a young male, so that has a lot to do with it. And I also don't overcook it and dry it out in the oven. Keep in mind that when you buy a pork shoulder that's boneless from the butcher, it will be all floopy and you'll have to use some twine to create a solid shape from the shoulder. And that way when you slice it, it's not falling apart. And when you're cooking it, it's not falling apart. So I suggest you do that, but this is bone in, so I don't have to do that step. Step one. Put your pork shoulder on one of these grated baking trays. Step two, douse it with oil or fat. This will help it crisp up and stay moist. It will also help the pickling spice uh, stick to the pork shoulder. Massage the pork shoulder with your hands. Don't forget the other side. This is any pickling spice, any more the better. And I like to add more bay leaf. Pepper it, salt it generously. Now here's the fun part. Get a tiny carving knife and make incisions in the shoulder like so and stick garlic inside. This really makes this dish amazing. The garlic caramelizes within the shoulder and when you slice it, it's part of your sliced meat, it's so yummy oozes the garlic flavor into the meat while it's cooking. I cannot stress enough, do not skip this step. It's worth the hassle. So there you have it. It's all oiled up, pickle spiced up, and garliced up on both sides. Don't forget to do both sides. And now I'm gonna cover it in foil, and I'm going to cook it for two hours covered at 350 and then one more hour uncovered at 350. Now if you're working with a larger shoulder or without the bone in it, you might want to adjust the cooking time. I'm a slav so I have slav sense. I know when meat is perfectly done. You probably don't have this ability so I would just google pound per cooking time. Looks done to me. Look at the beautiful color on that. Once you take it out of the oven, let it rest. I would even cover it in foil for at least 15 minutes. All the juices need to sink back into the meat. Uh, you don't want to be cutting this and having it all spill out on you. Behold the glory of the bujanina. Let's give it a little slice and see what happens. Oh wow, still juicy. Perfectly cooked. And look at that garlic in there. Yum. Slap a little homemade horseradish, recipe linked below. And throw this on a piece of bread. Rye bread from a slav store works the best, but you can also bake your own or use anything really. If you're gluten-free or keto, 
eat it just like this. I hope you enjoyed that recipe, and I hope that more people can get out of their padded room of Uber Eats decadence and go straight to the food source. Not everyone has to shoot their own meat, but at least visit a farm and see how a chicken is slaughtered or something. Everyone's gone a little too soft. Stay healthy, stay slav.